Well, hello, everybody. It's Pearl of Wisdom time. I'm Pearl of Wisdom, and you're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom, which is tongue-in-cheek, by the way. I don't think I'm smarter than anybody out there. It's kind of why I did it. It's a weird little play on thing, like, ah, whatever. I don't think I'm smarter than anybody because I want you guys to let me know what you think of these trades I'm about to do. I'm going to do Jack Eichel going to every team in this series. And today, what I'm going to do is I'm going over to Cap Friendly. We're going to start with the teams with the most cap room and we're going to work our way up. Today, I'm doing the New Jersey Devils and the LA Kings. And LA Kings have been rumored to be in on the Eichel talks. Now, a few things to take into consideration here, of course, is that Eichel has to go for surgery on his neck. It's not going to be career-threatening. He'll be fine. That's assuming he takes a surgery. They're have, Buffalo and him are having a little bit of uh, uh, discussion or disagreement on which way to go with his neck, so we'll see what happens with that. All right, so he's not going to be traded for a little bit, but... The hubbub has been out there a lot, and he may not be traded at all. But the way his, uh, the things that he's saying right now really kind of leads us to think that it's possible at least. So why don't we have fun and just make trades? I also, if you go into my videos, scroll down a little bit, you'll see Kane traded to every team in the league when, in, when Chicago was possibly going through a rebuild, and we saw what that happens. The fact of the matter is, it's just fun to picture a guy like Eichel on your team. And he could end up there. So let's look at it here at, uh, by the way, uh, hit the subscribe and the bell if you could. Uh, if you're enjoying this fine program, it helps out a lot. I'm trying to get to a 1,000 followers uh, right now, and that would be freaking amazing if I could do that. Also, if you like it, like it. That helps out a lot, too. Okay, so New Jersey Devils fans. I've had some New Jersey Devils fans given a lot of... Uh, what happens is, uh, quite often, is if it's your team, uh, you don't want to lose anybody, right? <laughs> like You just want to, you know, let's give uh, Michael McLeod and Damon Severson and a first. No, that's not going to do it. It's not even going to close to be doing it. Remember, this is post-surgery when he's fine and stuff like that. Even now, if you want to take the gamble now, you might be able to get it for less, knowing that he's going to be fine, which if I'm a team out there, I might even consider it now. If I can get him on the cheap now, that surgery is not going to be a problem. <clears throat> Are we worried about... Uh, him having a bad year in Buffalo? I'm not. I'm not. That organization is an absolute disaster. I, I don't blame them at all. The weight of the losing on that organization has just got ridiculous. And it might even get to the point now where they almost have to bring in new energy and trade a guy like Eichel, which is ridiculous. You talk about dropping the ball as an organization when – it may be the best option to trade a player like Eichel, a generational player. Yes, a generational player. Let's look at what Eichel has done here, just quick before we go on. Uh, uh, make sure everybody can see that in here. Yeah, see, his first year as a, as a 18-year-old, he had 56 points in 81 games. Uh, you, just to put that in perspective, look what Lafreniere, who's going to be an absolutely fantastic player this year, did for the Rangers. Or Kako, or a guy that we're going to be looking at possibly trading here, Hughes. Um, not Didn't put up huge numbers, right? He puts up 56 in his first year. And then 50, follows up with the 57 which was even kind of less. But, I mean, remember, these are really bad teams. By the time he's 20 years old, he's throwing up almost a point a game on a bad team, 22 over a point a game. And then we start to see a drop 
as the losing starts wearing on him. This guy's got talent to be a 100-point-plus player, okay? If he's in the right organization with the right people and the right people working around him and a winning attitude, he's going to crush it. I'm not even concerned about his 18 points in 21 games. To me, that's actually with what he had working around him and the energy that was going on with that team, it's actually not even that bad. So, um, and we saw with Hall too. As soon as he moved to a different organization, what's he doing now? He's doing great, okay? Um, so, let's go back to New Jersey now. What is New Jersey going to have to offer? Remember, this is healthy. This is later. Uh, probably in another, you know, beginning of the season, say, when he's almost getting ready. So this draft's not going to matter. Unless you want to take him now and take a chance on it. But most teams likely won't do that. And Buffalo likely won't do that. Because they know they're not going to get as much for him now anyways. So it's probably not going to happen till later. Okay, for those going McLeod and all of that stuff. I, okay, as uh, for New Jersey, I'm going to do everything I can to not touch defensemen in this deal. Because they really need defensemen so badly. It's the weakest part of their... Uh, they got Shakir Makamadoulin, who I really like, by the way, coming up. And you never know with um, uh, Danal Musui or, you know, Case uh, McCarthy. Um, they could start to fill in some roles here. And, of course, they, they played Ball, who they got from Hall already this year, Kevin Ball. But they are desperately thin on D. And uh, I would try not to trade anything on there. And Buffalo, I think, would be fine with that. But you are going to have to include either Jack Hughes or Nico Heischer. One of the two. There's no getting around it. If you're not willing, if the New Jersey is not willing to include Nico Heischer and Jack Hughes, the deal's off. You're not getting them. So don't even think about it. You're not. Um, so in the comments section, let me know as a Jersey fan or even not a Jersey fan, which one of the two would you prefer to put in there? I think Jack Hughes has a higher upside. Um, you wouldn't have to give up as much with Jack Hughes if you chose to put, include Jack Hughes in the package. Um, it's possible that Jack Hughes might be the better player to put in the package because He's now going to be taking second fiddle to Eichel. I think Nico Heischer is more prepared to do something like that. I also think that Nico Heischer is more of a top-end second-line center than a, than a number-one center, although he's a great two-way center. And if he's in the number-one center spot, it's not terrible. There's a lot of centers like Nico Heischer out there that play top minutes. And that's not too bad, depending on what you build around him. But... And it's uh, Nico's. All, they already just made him the captain as well. So let's say they go with Jack Hughes. You got Jack Hughes. Who else? If we're not getting rid of forwards, first of all, tell me if you think that should be enough. If you think that Eichel for Hughes straight across should be enough, that's it. Jack Hughes is twenty years old and hasn't put up what Eichel put up when he was 18 so far. Um, you can make a case that he didn't have much to play with either, but Eichel didn't have much to play with. So I would say Eichel as a top-end talent is more of a top-end talent than Jack Hughes. Not likely going to take that straight across. So we're going to have to add someone else. I would say someone else significant as well. Um, I'm wanting... Pavel Zaka. I want Zaka and Hughes and a first round pick. There you go. Zaka, Hughes, a first round pick. You, I'll let you get away with not, yeah, I mean, next year or the year after. Next, the year after is Bedard. But you're getting Eichel now to play with Kalkinen and Sharon Govich, who are looking fantastic. Uh, you keep Nico Heischer. You can bring Miles Wood up here. Not to mention, New Jersey has some very good players coming up as far as forwards are concerned. And Dawson Mercer, I don't know when he's going to be ready. 
Um, why do they not have that suite here that you picked up last year? That's weird. Uh, what's his name? You guys help me out in the... Oh, Holtz. Alexander Holtz. Here he is. Alexander Holtz coming up who probably needs a little more time, but looks like he's going to be a scorer. Um, and you got Jack Eichel. You're freaking laughing up the middle now for a lot of years. Jack Eichel should be happy with this. By the way, he doesn't have a no-trade clause, so he can't really choose where he goes. But I, him playing with Sharon Govich and Kalkinen would probably be better than what he's had to do. And the en new energy and everything that comes for playing with playing with New Jersey. I love Lindy Ruff. I think Lindy Ruff is a great coach. Put it in the comment section if you think differently. We can discuss that. But um, that's what I think it's going to probably have to take. Tell me if you agree. Tell me who else you would put in there instead of Zaka. Who are you going to try to throw at me? Maybe Jesper Bratt? Possibly Jesper Bratt. They actually, Buffalo may need right wingers more. I just love Pavel Zaka. That's, I want Pavel Zaka and I want Jack Hughes. Um, maybe I'm not being fair here. You let me know. Tell me what you think down there in the comment section. Um, now, the next one I said we're going to do is the LA Kings. And uh, I have Quinton Byfield up here for a reason because that's the first player that people are going to be looking at for a guy like Jack Eichel. Um, again, remember, this is after we know that his surgery is done, he's flying, he's back to being Jack Eichel again, all of those sort of things like that. Byfield put up 20 points in 32 games as a 18-year-old in the minors. That's pretty good, pretty good numbers. Now, if Jack Eichel, as an, Jack Eichel, remember, as an 18-year-old, put 51 points up in 82 games in the NHL. So, to say that he's in the same field as Eichel, no, he's not. He's got huge size. That's awesome. He's going to be a very good player. I think he's going to be like in the Couture type area, somewhere around there. Uh, a bigger version of Couture. And uh, he could possibly have higher upside than that, but that's where I'm looking at. So would you trade Eichel straight across for Couture? No, um, you wouldn't. I wouldn't. So let's look at L.A. and uh, see what else that we're looking at for. By the way, you're going to probably ask for cap and stuff like that. Hughes is going to need a contract. So the cap pretty much is taken care of. Um, both L.A., and New Jersey are the bottom of the league as far as cap is concerned. And they would be able to support the $10 million contract of Eichel. In fact, I would even go as far as to say that um, we can just look at it right here, what their cap situation is. I would go as far as to say that the $10 million deal for Eichel is actually more of a plus. Because that's not a bad deal for an elite top-line center in the league right now. So... I think it's more of a plus anyways. Um, cap Projected cap space, $20 million for 2021-22. They have, they, they have some guys to sign like Trevor Moore. Athens CU is not necessary, but they might sign him. He's not going to be too huge. They're set pretty good as far as cap space is concerned here, no doubt about it. So let's look at the depth chart and say, okay, Byfield is off the book. Uh, they're not trading Byfield. Let's just say that that's a no start, non starter. Um, they're not doing Byfield. So Buffalo says, okay, let's take a look at what the rest of you got, and then we'll tell you later if we're going to be interested or not. Um, I'd be going Gabe Velarde for sure. And no, we're not taking NJ Culpitar. Don't even think it. No, we're not taking him. He's. 33 years old, there's no reason why Buffalo needs Andre Kopitar. Um, I do believe he probably has a no-trade, no-movement clause anyways. Yeah, I'm sure he does. And uh, he wouldn't be saying, okay, to go to Buffalo. We don't want Dustin Brown. Barely want Alex Iafalo. He's okay, but he's not great. We want Gabriel Velarde, for sure. 
we want the number one, your number one draft pick for 2022-23. Uh, for sure. And I want Tobias Bjornfort. I love him, love him, love him, love him, love him. That's who I want. I want Tobias Bjornfort, Gabriel Velarde, your first next year. And you might even have to throw more in there, to tell you the honest truth. Um, you might have to throw two firsts. Because Bjornfort is very good. He's going to be a top four defenseman. Velarde kind of had, yeah, for 21 at 23 points in 54 games, not bad. But is he a true number one center? It's very possible that he's not. So, yeah, I'd want more than that. And maybe whatever deal we can work out here uh, might not even work because I think you're going to find other teams to offer more than what I just said. Uh, maybe throw in Jared Dolan Anderson. Then I'm thinking. Then you got me thinking for sure. Jared Dolan Anderson, Gabriel Velarde, Tobias Bjornfort in a first. Maybe what you need to offer to take it. And you'll see as I do these videos why I say that. Um, what happens sometimes people, they look at trades and they say, we're not giving that much or it shouldn't cost that much for Eichel. It costs as much as what somebody else is going to offer out there. And when we go through this, you've got teams like the New York Rangers, Colorado Avalanche, who have prospects like crazy that are going to probably be able to outbid my first offer here. So if you want them, this is what it's going to take. If that sounds like too much to you, then you move on. You don't get Eichel. So, uh, but I, I just kind of do this to show people, kind of give people an idea of where it will be when it comes down to it for how much you're going to give up for a guy like Eichel. Look at that. We hit 17 minutes now. I got a show to do in what? Uh, oh, jeez. I got to get Got to get my shirt on and everything. Uh, 3 to 5 Eastern, I do a hockey show, my NHL, uh, or Perlow's NHL hockey show, or Pearl's of Wisdom show. Uh, go check it out. We just It's a interactive with the fans. Well, not fans, with other people. Fans? The fans of hockey, just like me. If you're a fan of hockey and you want to talk hockey, and you got something to say, Throw her out there, and we'll have a chat. Come on, 3 to 5 Eastern, 5 days a week. It's a lot of fun. Also, Steel Flyers Network, the www.steelflyers.com. They're the people that pay me. They It just had 8,500 hits in less than a month. It is a fantastic website. Go check it out. It's just growing and growing and growing. What it's going to be is every team from every major sport is going to be uh, represented and talked about, just like I'm doing right now. We'll have writers, uh, vloggers, um, people that do live shows, which we have Off the Wall Hockey and Joe, uh, Professor Joe and all of, and uh, Peyton on the radio. Go check those out. It is awesome. Go check it out. Till next time, I'll be doing another two teams, maybe three. Have a great day, everybody. Okay, bye.